the round and yeah. circle right. and maybe spirals and uh, mm -hmm. and then we all get included in that beyond our wider student. Mm -hmm. So for that, may I open it all to you to enter this circle um, <laughs> with us. Questions, comments, responses? I like the idea of this circle because whenever we get volunteers in Uganda, we put them in round houses. And I tell them there are no corners here. Mm -hmm. So if you stay here longer, you will forget the corners you have back home. Mm -hmm. Because you become more open-minded and you accept people more. Mm -hmm. Because there is really practically everything is within the vicinity. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> More people entering the circle? Yeah. You know, I've never, I've watched this movie so many times, but I've never actually watched it with you. Mm -hmm. Right? And so I've showed it to various students and said, have you watched this movie? Yeah. No, well, not so much. And I haven't watched it with John either. So it's really interesting to watch it with both of you. And I'm kind of, uh, so two questions. Number one, when is the last time you actually watched this film? Uh, I don't know. And that. second. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just want to know like, what, what, you, what you see when you watch it, right? Because every time I watch it, I get something very different from it. And mm -hmm. I start to recognize people that I know, mm -hmm. right? Um, yeah, so those two questions. Yeah, first of all, I don't know if you follow the different segments of that movie. There are moments when I was totally broken down, yes. mm -hmm. emotionally. Even oh, my yeah. way of talking mm -hmm. changed. I was yes. just fighting to keep back my tears. Mm -hmm. And that was something reminding me of the pain I witnessed and also the pain I went through. But at the same time, there were not really tears of sadness alone. In other, in other parts of the movie, I had a lot of joy. So I kind of confused everybody. The joy I have is to really see what I've been talking about has gone way beyond what I expected. Even looking at some of those girls and looking at them now reminds me that we have taken a long journey. We walked a long, long journey with these girls. And uh, again, I feel so happy that I'm still part of their journey. I'm still close to them and we know each other. There is a way we relate which they know exactly is different even from one who has given birth to you. You think sister is not my mother, but she's my mother at the same time. I also take them and say, these are my children. We are all connected to the sufferings they went through, but not only the suffering, but also the victory, mm -hmm. the hard work. I think many times you heard me emphasizing about hard work. Mm -hmm. Because I told some people today, when I went to St. Monica, I found myself helpless. Mm -hmm. I. One time I told Duquesne, when they gave me honorary doctorate, I said, I'm sorry I never used my degree at all. <laughs> you keep, now you're giving me, I, I don't know even where I use them. I keep those papers aside. <laughs> I have to think about how I could use the knowledge acquired di from different levels, starting right from home. Say this knowledge, I can patch it with another knowledge and can help me to change the life of that girl, to change the life of that child. And that's how my learning has been. Yeah. And the word learning, did you remember how the one girl used that word learning, mm -hmm. how much it meant? Mm -hmm. and, and you were telling us about that the word university yes. is, tell us a little bit more <laughs> about why maybe you don't want a university. No, it's okay. <laughs> there. It's so yeah. interesting. That girl was asking me if we had done this place one day to be a university. Now you have all seen. If I turn this place into a university, that means I'm cutting off all those disadvantaged women and children. Mm -hmm. Because it will be something very high, a higher level of education, which they can't even dream of. But yet at the same time, that place is well structured. It's very beautiful. My just we want it to be for the university. I want it to be for the university of the vulnerable. They should come and learn from there. They should see how we can how we clean that place. They should see how they can move from this place to another. That's why 
I said, no, I don't think I can ever dream of a university there because if you really would tell the truth, what we have done, if somebody could really plan and say, we put all what has been done in academic language, we, all those girls should get mm -hmm. degrees. Mm -hmm. They should only be awarded. Mm -hmm. First of all, because of their resilience. Mm -hmm. And the second one is, as mothers who really escaped and managed to bring back children they brought from their own captors, children who will remind them of all the pain they've gone through, they look at these children now very positively. That means they've passed all sorts of examinations mm -hmm. anybody could give. Mm -hmm. Another story you told um, in another group that we were in, I had the privilege to be in, you were talking about an incident where the mothers came with their children and to play yeah. and were able to relive or regain their own Tell, tell more. Tell I love that more. part That's because so beautiful. I used to walk from sometimes from my office or from anywhere. Our house is built in such a way that it's a little raised, so you can actually see everywhere. Even the windows can reflect. Even a girl is very far. You would observe each and everything through the window glass, and I always say, okay, this is a lighthouse. I can see everything. <laughs> so I started catching. The glimpse of these girls at break time when we give them chance, say go and breastfeed your child, go and take care of your child. They would go and pick their children, put on their backs, and then they start playing among themselves. The play of little girls. And I thought of this and I said, okay, now they are recovering their lost childhood. These are girls who are children themselves growing children. And it was very interesting to give them that time always to play. It's so beautiful, because these children had, they were children, they were never able to be children. Yeah, they never And now through that. their children, yeah. they were able to regain their own childhood. That leaves me yeah. very deeply. Do, do you wish Rachel would make another, another movie with me? Because what I see, like, Evelyn, right? Mm -hmm. And we know Evelyn today, and she is so remarkable. Even the little girl who killed her sister. Ah, you won't believe who she is. Yeah. Susan, if you see her beauty alone, yeah. it's unbelievable. I brought her to the United States mm. twice. Yeah. She is so pretty, she's a leader of the others. Yeah, because it's, it's really a moment frozen in time mm -hmm. as well, right? Yeah. But, but these women have grown in mm -hmm. into really remarkable yeah. women. Yeah. Right? And yeah. their kids are gorgeous, right? I'm sure they all have new stories built on yes. old stories yes. that they can tell. Yeah. And that's one of the things which made me to think very, very deeply about literacy. Mm. Because I wanted literacy to empower them, to make them be able to speak by themselves, mm -hmm. to connect with the audience anywhere and tell their stories. Because mm -hmm. I think the importance of telling their story should really be highlighted mm -hmm. in everything. That is something which happened in the past, but it will be something which will remind us constantly of what a human person can go through, can overcome, and how resilient a person can be. I have a question. Um, how long do the girls stay? And is there a period of time when they then leave, or say, that is a question I've received for many people. And actually, when these girls come to us, we never tell them, you're going to be here for two years or three years. We never give them any period of time. Because we want them to gain confidence and be there. Because some of them are deeply traumatized and they may need longer time to really get over their trauma. And so we make them feel that they are at home. Mm -hmm. And then when they feel they are able to move, they normally ask to go by themselves. That's what I wonder. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they want to go to set up their jobs. In fact, the group of Evelyn, I started winning them by saying, you girls, you need to start some business. Mm -hmm. If we don't have money, I say, it's OK. Come and work for me. I'll give you money. <laughs> and I was giving them. I gave them. I said, give me back that money. I got, I got money from somebody. $2,000, mm -hmm. 
I distributed that money to each of them. I said, start your business and bring back for me my interest. I knew I was just playing games. <laughs> they, they would never give me back the money. They never gave me a single cent. <laughs> but at least I encouraged them to start something. Mm -hmm. And they would come back and report. I said, what have you started selling? They said, I'm selling charcoal. Even they used to collect honey from different places. They mix with the knee, put in bottles and sell to people. I say, as long as you're doing something, you can come to me to get money mm -hmm. and I hope you can pay me back, which they never did. <laughs> <laughs> I will never do. <laughs> it's okay, I wanted to encourage them to do something. Of course. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Other responses, questions? Responses, you don't need questions. Just <laughs> what did you feel? What was it like? Oh, yeah. Where's this young man from? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Sorry. I lost my voice like two days ago. <laughs> I'm from Uganda, actually. Good. Yeah. Which part of Uganda? Uh, I grew up in Kampala, but my like my heritage is from Dokowa district. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I'm Lamo. Right. Yeah. So there's one girl there in that movie from Lamo. Oh, yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. No, I, I think it was a. <coughs> sorry. I think it was a great movie because uh, for me, like every time I'm here in WVU, I I know it's like a privilege, mm -hmm. like you know, like my cousins are all from similar situations like that. Right. My aunties, my uncles, mm -hmm. so like, and you know, I wasn't lucky enough to like learn my language, so I don't know Lango that well. Mm -hmm. I can speak a bit, mm -hmm. but like every time I would try to communicate with them, it was really hard. So I could always tell that our stories were so different. Because yeah. I, I got home, like I would go to my village for like two weeks and you know, no pipe to order, no electricity, nothing. But then I would leave and I had those privileges. So, I, mm. so I, this movie reminded me like, uh, you know, like people talk about having a, a why, a reason for living. Mm. So for mm. me, I think I've always been drawn to even here, the reason why I work hard is because I want to help my country yeah. one day. Right. And, you know, this just reminded me of that again. Not to get, you know, I think sometimes when I'm here, I get caught up in smaller worries yeah. compared to what we have. I mean, every, everyone has their level of worries, but it's, it's a bit different in Africa. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, this movie reminded me of, you know, the big picture and... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I still have work to do. Like, like you, I'm, I'm very grateful for what you've done. Brother. I'm not making it about me. Your, your work is amazing. Thank um, you. Thank yeah, I'm, you. I'm glad there are people like you, Thank because you. like I, I don't think like these people. I mean, if you've been to Africa, you wouldn't understand. But like tailoring and like learning how those are big things. Like you, you wouldn't know, mm -hmm. and like the money that she was giving them. Like I, I guess you wouldn't have context for it. it wasn't that much compared to what people make here yeah, but in northern uganda that's oh so much God. money to get 200,000 <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah so like there's people living off of like a hundred dollars a month in uganda mm -hmm. you know and they would be very very grateful for you know work like yours hope i can make you know a fraction of the impact <laughs> you made mm. that would be nice what is your major uh chemical engineering it's yeah. like Okello. It's just like Baba Okello. And Okello goes, whenever Okello goes on holidays in Uganda, he goes to volunteer for me. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Every time. Nice. So this time around, when I, last semester I was going home, mm -hmm. and I had a lot of suitcases. I always go with like 10 suitcases. <laughs> People think I'm crazy. <laughs> yeah. I have popped up. This time I had toys for children. <laughs> yeah. And I knew I was supposed to be paying a lot of money for mm -hmm. the suitcases. And I noticed that Okello was not going because you cannot just pay for mm -hmm. fare to go home. And I asked Reggie and Rachel, I said, would you support for me somebody to come with me? Rachel said, yeah, definitely, if you know somebody from northern Uganda. I called Okello, I said, Okello, someone is going to offer you air ticket, but you are coming to carry for me suitcases. <laughs> <laughs> He said, sister, this is a big privilege I, I never expected. Oh. So we went home with Okello. Okello was carrying like 10 suitcases, and I was carrying 10 suitcases. <laughs> <laughs> How but did you say to Okello? How did you say to Bob? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, since I've been working together with Okello. Yeah. yeah. 
to them. And who is that? I don't know who that is. It's a student. It's a student. Oh, yeah. A student? Yeah. yeah. But it came with engineering too. Yeah. He's from Lango. He's yeah, he's from Lango. Lango. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 But um, I want to appreciate what you even say yeah. about yourself and what you think. I always tell people when you are in another culture, learn what is in that culture and know what you can take back home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There was a girl who came to be interviewed in the office of in the Sewing Home Foundation, and I don't know whether she was from Zimbabwe. And uh, I felt a little bit disappointed because I was one of those interviewing her. She wants work with the, she wants to go to law school, and she wants to have experience with the foundation because these are uh, lawyers running this foundation. But then when we were asking her, she, what I wanted to hear from her was, I want to learn and go back home to make an impact. Mm -hmm. She said, I want to, to study and get a job here. Yeah, I was so disappointed about that. Mm -hmm. Not because it's that she, she could stay here, she can stay, all right, but I would like people, young people who can be committed to go back and make an impact mm -hmm. even on that nation. You are from Northern Uganda. You know how much we lack, how many things we are totally behind. So one time in the class I was sharing with the, my group, they were all discussing. Sometimes you read things according to your own culture, and it depends on how you're looking at it. We were reading about um, the former president of Tanzania, Nyerere. And uh, the, I think the, the one before him, the one who talked about Ujama is Nyerere, you're right. Nyerere. Nyerere is a man who really encouraged socialism. Mm -hmm. And so everybody was talking about socialism and they, they were reading it in <coughs> terms of Soviet Union, United States, and I'm the only African in that class. And I told them, I said, listen, you are reading this thing according to where you are, <coughs> and I don't blame you. But the socialism of Nyerere he's talking about is that we belong to each other. There's no way you can be lazy, you must work. When you go to, be, to visit somebody, the first day you can be considered a visitor. The next day you really say, give him a hole. You go and join and dig with other people. Then the students asked me, American students, they said, what about if I refuse to go to work? I said, listen to me, you will be ostracized. <laughs> you know, we, as again, you talk about the roundness of the circle. I said we live in small round houses. You cannot say, I'm going to have my iPad and I hide. <laughs> There's no way you're hiding. You're, you're going to be seen. So you must work. So one of the students said, now I understand. <laughs> uh, I had not understood this reading completely. <laughs> and then look at the context of this reading. You know. Yeah. Question. Um, I wonder if you could talk to us about um, since the, the conflict has ended and time has progressed, there are uh, fewer and fewer women coming to St. Monica's who were abducted. Mm -hmm. uh, and so who is coming now? What, what, they're still excluded, but what are, where are they coming from? What types of situations? Actually, the situation we are in, has uh, it's like we did not divert from our own vision and what we started with. Because we keep one word, like an umbrella word, vulnerable women. Mm -hmm. And then women who drop out of school for any reason. And of course, Northern Uganda as a whole experienced this, that a lot of these women, even who are not abducted by rebels, grew up in internally displaced people's camps. Some children were born there. Mm -hmm. And so they also lost their chances of education. Mm -hmm. And so putting St. Monica as a center for welcoming women who are vulnerable, women who dropped out of education. I think we are addressing the need of almost all the women in Northern Uganda. And at the same time, it is still encouraging the women who were abducted, who were students of St. Monica, they are coming back now as, I think they are a different group of women completely. Mm -hmm. Like we have got uh, the peace conference, which we started from, if Luke knows the story, we started with some drinking of jeans. Not Guinness. 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 Uh -huh. You are drinking Guinness. Yep. Don't look at it badly, okay? You no, I know it's my favorite. I like dark beer. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
Guinness gave us some wisdom. <laughs> the starting the Women's Peace Conference. And so this Women's Peace Conference brings people from Lira, from Karamoja. Do you think women from Lira and Karamoja would match? In terms, you see, tribalism. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Women from Arua cannot get along with women from Bulu. Mm -hmm. Women from Moyo cannot get along with women from Bulu because of the tribal conflict which has been. So this peace conference is bringing all these women together, and we are addressing all the problems women face in the society wherever they are, and. Uh, it happened that these two professors are part of this peace conference. I think you can even elaborate and you think about your own feelings and how this peace conference is going. I think there are many things which will come out of this peace conference because this is the third year or fourth year we are going to it. Sure. Okay, we thought we'd look at fourth, but no problem still. I think we have already gone like a long way. You can say something to John. Mm. Everybody, I'm John Harris. I just follow and Sister. Uh, yeah. um, <laughs> <laughs> that's lucky for you. Yeah. It's, it's, it's. Well, the other thing is, if you ever get five minutes alone with her, she'll tell you what the rest of your life will look like. And, and I had uh, one of those five-minute conversations with her, and rewind, rewind too much of my life. Um, yeah. So yeah, the peace conference. It's a matter of just bringing um, these these women and women in the groups that. They me understand what I, I don't think it's really a contradiction but it is in, in my head because at the beginning of the film um, you helped us to see how important it was to let the um, women tell their stories mm -hmm. uh, no matter how you know terrifying and terrible they were mm -hmm. but you also make the, the really important point not to stay in the past yeah um, because they, they have a future despite the horribleness of their past. Mm -hmm. So were you talking about two different times in their lives that sometimes it's better to listen but other times it's better not to bring up the past? I, I, I'd like to understand more about, because like in Truth and Reconciliation is, as I understand it as a, as a not as an expert, but, but the importance is to face even the ugliness of the past but I was very moved by your saying that sometimes we just begin again. Mm -hmm. can, can you talk about how, how do you know when, which of those is emotionally mm -hmm. uh, as well as ethically and spiritually? Yeah, you know, right from the beginning, when I started getting in contact with these girls, I knew straight away that I had to stand on hope and I had to point to them a different future. And for me, I knew these girls would be discouraged at some point. They would think, as the society also, people were rejecting them, and uh, they had no chances of education. Because Uganda, once you are not educated, you can't even get a job, and so forth. And these girls would feel like they were a nobody completely in the society. I had to become more innovative. And one of the things, I think we, you even saw in the movie, I said, I treat them with no sympathy. And that behind that, no sympathy is all love. Because I can be very hard on them, and then they make me laugh. I dance with them. But I want them to know truly that that past, much as it has gone, is not to be forgotten. They need to use it as a bridge which can take them back and forth. Mm -hmm. My really emphasis is that the bridge of, the, of that past which we have built, should, they should not get stuck there. They should move on with the life. And I used to tell them constantly, we are going to rebuild your life from where you think it has totally been taken away from you. Mm -hmm. And that's why we were accepting any girl, like even one who felt, oh, I'm not capable, oh, I feel pain, I cannot do anything. I said, no, you are capable. You can rebuild your life. You can change your life. 
I used to stand in an assembly with them, and I was making them, I, I was like making them crazy and say, <laughs> repeat after me, I can change my life. Repeat every day. And really, I found many of them started valuing that they can change their lives. Because to change, to transform the life of a person, you really have to make the person be part of it. Mm -hmm. The person must know that her own destiny is in her hand. That's why for me, the uh, analogy of the, the sewing machine is the perfect one. Mm -hmm. The needle is the perfect, perfect analogy because the needle mends broken pieces of clothes. You are also broken. Mend your brokenness with your own hands. Mm. Sew away your pain with your own hands. Yes. Two more. Oh no, I was I was just thinking about the moment in the movie where you talked about your superiors at Sign in St. Monica's and of course that you'd have to go back to this place where you would have experienced your own trauma. And I think you said, well, you know, God has a plan for me there. I mean, what does is, what is that moment look like upon reflection now when you were... I think <laughs> that time, I, first of all, when they told me to go back, I told somebody today, I felt like Jonah. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Jonah was really running away, and God did not leave Jonah. God made the fish to swallow Jonah. Yeah. So I, was, I knew I was going to be swallowed in the war and by the war. I said, of all things, why am I told to go back? Who are four sisters, the three sisters who are stuck in that war as it started. But when we went back, I really made a lot of effort to do everything to get out of my trauma. I went and finished my degree and I did master's degree, came back, and the superior told me, go back there. That's for me the Jonah part. Yeah. And I didn't know what to do, and I said, okay, this. If it is God's will, I will go. If I have to build life on top of water, I'll do it. And I looked at it for me as really God's will, to the point that maybe God was listening to what I was saying and was listening to what I was thinking. I've been stuck there up to today, and I'm happy about it. I don't regret. I feel happy. Because to me, it is like uh, if I moved away or if I had disobeyed my superiors, there would have never been a story to be told. Yeah. It would have been cut off. Right. Yeah. Um, I I am so amazed at how you um, how you face difficult situations. What do you say to yourself? I mean, surely. Of all those women, there had to have been a few that were sparklers and just, you know, uh, you know how we meet people and they, uh, they're either unkind or however, you know, they wound, you know, you just get, but you just, <laughs> those those darts seem to just fly by you and I <laughs> thought, man, if I could learn, if I could learn how to do that and, and you somehow, are able to just rise above that petty, oh, I'm hurt, or someone, someone hurt me, or said something that was difficult. Mm -hmm. But you, you just seem to be able to rise above most things, but especially that. I think it is all about living here and now. Mm -hmm. It's not about planning to live for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And I knew the situations I was, uh, the situations I faced were all situations which, need, which needed a kind of response. And the response was supposed to be practical. Mm -hmm. The response was supposed to be, you are supposed to be seen in that situation. You are supposed to be seen doing. Mm -hmm. Because words alone was not going to help. Mm -hmm. And that's why I said the most important thing in this situation was presence, being present in the mm -hmm. situation. And somebody added being faithful to that presence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, now I'll 
So I was just thinking about like all the stuff you're doing. Uh, a big thing for me is like, as you said, we're so behind, not, not just in Northern Uganda, but even if you think about Africa in general. Um, what's the what's the future like at St. Monica, you know, especially for like the children of the of the women, because, you know, I'm really thinking like, I've got the chance to, I'm going to graduate with an engineering degree in May. Mm -hmm. And I feel like more Africans need to do um, challenging things, you know, like, I mean, it doesn't have to be engineering, but you know, something innovative. that's, yeah, exactly, innovative, something that's new. So what does the future look like over there? You know, you're asking me because you have not been in San Monica. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Actually, you are inviting yourself yeah. now. <laughs> because from the first day, yeah. from when we started, when we were making this movie up to now, mm -hmm. you will not even recognize San Monica. Okay. The kindergarten you saw there, even they showed you already the, when the infrastructure was built. I started the kindergarten under a mango tree. Mm. And later I got that kindergarten you've seen. And then, from that kindergarten, we have now moved to a primary school in Atiak. Mm -hmm. We have built an orphanage. We have got women who have gone ahead with some of their studies. Some of those children you saw in that movie are in colleges. Oh. Yes. And uh, one thing which I noticed, most of the children among those kids you saw cannot forget whatever happened to them. Mm. Last December, I was in Uganda. I always give Christmas party to many children, orphans, children, even the children who were with us in the past, their mothers, I invite them all to come. And this time we were in Atiak, and uh, I think somebody asked me to give a speech, and I said before I give a speech, I would like to invite all the big children who were part of this movement mm -hmm. to come forward. I was shocked to see them, I didn't even know they were the ones. Oh. Some of the one of them say he is actually a top manager of that new sugar factory in Amoro. I was so surprised. And some kids, like Patrick, very smart kid. This boy is studying in Kampala, but you should have seen him when I got him. Yeah. All the rest of Bakoli, I you you don't remember a single word in Lao? I remember some words. Do you know Ayom? I, I feel like I've heard. Ayom is a monkey. Mm. <laughs> All the children were calling this boy monkey mm. because he was so swollen. He was malnourished. He was a nobody, like ready to die. Mm. I picked this boy, brought him to Gulu, helped him, put him in kindergarten. He used to look like a married man. He was so tall among the bigger <laughs> children. I said, You stay there. <laughs> Little ones, and he was the biggest. I said, Even if you look like a married man, you will be there. This boy is so smart now. Mm. I put him in a school in Kampala. For a child from northern Uganda to come to one of the first class schools in Kampala, mm -hmm. he is number one in all the classes. Yeah. And now he's in senior four. Mm -hmm. I know that boy is serving a future. Innocent, a boy I picked up, he has no arms. Mm -hmm. You should see who he is now. So I think these children, really, all of them were on that day for that party. They all came up. They say, okay, you said your sister talking, let us speak. They got the microphone. Okay. They started telling their own stories in front of everybody. And out of them came Bosco, John Bosco. I didn't know why Bosco was coming. Bosco is a, a district accounting officer. Bosco said, all of you do not know what Sister Rosemary did to me. I look old, but I sister did so much to make me to be who I am. Mm. And next year in December, I am the one going to head this party. Oh. I'll start by giving my contribution. He gave one million, wow. which is a lot of money yeah. for Uganda. He said, that is the money I'm going to organize this party. Sister made me to achieve in my education. And here is where I was telling John yesterday that I used to punch him, slap him. I said, you must be straight. You must be. And he is the best of himself now. So most of these children have a future. And also the women. Some of them have started their own businesses. Whenever I walk to town in Gulu, 
Sometimes I get tired of them calling me, sister, come and see what I'm doing. Sister, come to my shop. Sister, come and buy from me. It really pleases me to see that they are doing something. And like one of these ladies you've seen, you need to see her now. You will not believe she's the one, Evelyn. She's the leader of other women. She started the network advocacy for, for other women who came from Kapindi. She leads them. She's totally a different person. You will not recognize anyone you have seen in this movie. John's had her. Uh, she's frequently yes. to speak. She's yes. been to um, yeah. Europe as well, right? Not just many times. She wrote a book. I yeah. mean, she many times it's been remarkable. Yeah. yeah. And she saw her daughter do it to fame. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. You know, and it's you. You was. She, she came from Bolivia with them. Yeah. 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 Well, I just want to give you a chance. You don't need to say anything. But sometimes people oh. say, oh, "I wish I just maybe." <laughs> okay. That is the you important of the circle. Say something or ask a question or feel free. I don't. I mean, I have I have a lot of thoughts, and thank you so much for for being with us today. Um, but I'm just like still processing. Okay. <laughs> I drove five hours from Philadelphia today, so I'm, I'm quite tired. Yeah. Well, well, so, well, well, but I'm welcome. processing and I have lots of thoughts. And, uh, and thank yeah. you for coming. Yeah. Thanks for thanks. having me. Yes. And I think what I want to say is thank you all for a remarkable spiritual experience. And um, may we all be well. I met you in the first day and we started fighting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we did. We've been fighting ever since. If fighting, fighting. Fighting. <laughs> fighting looks like this, I think we can handle it. <laughs> we are already asleep. <laughs> uh -huh.